Hey guys and girls, Board now back with you on this video. I will be talking about Secret Invasion Episode 2. The episode is called Promises. Full spoilers from the start of this review. So I was very middling on the opening episode. Overall, not very impressed with it. But there was one or two things about it I quite enjoyed. This episode's weaker, I think. This episode was even less impressive, in my opinion. And it just sort of confirms some of the things that they're doing with the show. And, like, some some of the genres they're dipping into isn't really working. For me, at least not in this sort of show. Or, at the very least, they could work if, if the show was more interesting. If it was more interesting to watch. But it's really not. But I think the other problem with this episode, bland is a good word for it, that's the word I was going to use, it's definitely bland this episode. But the other problem with it is that Nick Fury kind of comes across as really aggressive, like in an over the top sort of way. And it makes us not like him really, or, or that's my reaction to him, because you get big scenes with him in this episode where it's implied that like politically things are against him there's this like niche sort of um renegade type group who are part of this whole thing and we find out at one point in the episode then the leader of that group has like certain influence in in, in um in the West Wing, because we see him attend a meeting of, like, big political figures, and it, it sort of turns out they're dipping into modern politics again, because the idea is that they're trying to pass this whole thing off as being an invasion started by the Russians to, like, as a smokescreen, so that the real culprits won't get out. So they're using Moscow as, like, a scape goat type thing and we see fury become more and more desperate in the episode and even though on some basic level you you can have sympathy with him i just think they go overboard with his aggression in this episode and there's definitely certain things you can point to where certain characters are criticizing him and yeah, you kind of say they do have a point. Like, there's not really enough to get behind him. I, I don't think so anyway, at times. Um, and maybe some of it is context. Maybe some of it is because I haven't watched everything when it comes to Marvel, everything when it comes to this character. But it just seems like so far in this show, they haven't made him sympathetic enough. And may maybe that's... Part, partly what they're going for but I don't know I, I get the impression it's not really then it could just be bad writing but who knows so when they flee at the start of the episode where the riots have gone off and, and you, you get the fallout from what happened to Maria we see Agent Geller using his shape-shifting abilities on the train because he shapeshifts into like this beautiful woman so the army are going around each cabin, like, looking for Nick Fury, basically. And because Gera appears as, as a beautiful woman, kind of charms the young soldier and says, yeah, there's no one here by that name, or it's just me in the carriage, and, and the soldier, like, moves on. But then Fury and Gera get into this big argument, and... The episode opens, by the way, in the past, in 1997, and that's where we see Nick Fury first, you know, coming to, like, the, the scrolls and making this promise, with, which is the title of the episode, and we later find out that's why this group has started a rebellion and, and why it's trying to, you know, stitch up Nick Fury, because they feel like he, he's broken the promise to them. So, that's the setup for the episode. But him and Gela get into this argument, and Fury's really critical of Gela for bringing, like, all these scrolls to, to Earth. And, and his whole thing is, like, they're not going to coexist, because Gela is saying, well, I, 
there was nothing I could do. My The planet was being destroyed and we didn't know where you were. I had no choice. I had to try and save my people. And, 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 and his whole thing is that I'd hope they could coexist with humans. And, and Fury's like, no way. And, and this bit is actually quite good just because, once again, he, he goes full-blown Samuel L. Jackson and then has some pretty, like, enjoyable lines but that's maybe the highlight of the episode but then get like fury's bounce back with well well, obviously look at the evidence they can't coexist but then geller definitely has a point back because fury did abandon them he he went away for like a decade or or however long it, it was meant to be and left them in the lurch so at times you can see a good case for fury being the villain and again maybe that's partly what they're going for but I I just don't think it's very well done and the way they've handled the politics so far in this show it's a little too on the nose and and it just feels a bit like okay they're just referencing like real life stuff because a lot of the stuff with like immigration and and some of the disputes over that is definitely bleeding into the script but it's just not very subtle and and as i said in the first episode when you've already got like a fantastical superhero set up like you, you don't necessarily need And I know this isn't exactly like other superhero stories, but you you don't necessarily need anything else. It's already a metaphor for stuff going on in the real world. So some of Fury's scenes were kind of frustrating, even though Sam Jackson is, is doing a good job, as he always does. But at times... I did find the character annoying in this episode and we get a bit more of the Don Cheadle character in this episode because they meet up and we find out that he has been an ally at certain points for Fury and has like backed him being an official part of the setup and working for the, the, well it's government, yeah government I guess is the right term. But he basically fires him in this scene, and Fury starts ranting a, a bit like a madman. Like he start ranting about how he's trying to convince the Cheadle character that the invasion is real and that they're here and 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 all this sort of stuff. Which, like on the on the fr- face of it, yeah, he's he's in the right, and he's trying to convince him then he's being like set up and made to look like a scapegoat and and all the rest of it which is fine but it it just doesn't play very well in the scene also the leader of this resistance the leader of this fringe group we get more of him in this episode and i've got to say he's really boring like the actor's not very good at all he's really kind of like wooden and doesn't have a lot of charisma doesn't have a lot of the an an edge to him which he's like meant to and I just feel some of the politics are a little bit too on the nose where we we need a little bit more to it a a little bit more subtlety to like the writing and the way it's presented so he goes to this big meeting at the White House, and and basically the um, I think it's meant to be the Home Secretary. Uh, well, their equivalent of the Home Sec, the Foreign Secretary, I guess. I I didn't think it was the President. I didn't get that impression because I think we've seen the President in the first episode, but she has a high-ranking position anyway, and. The way this meeting is played out is that they're discussing the various merits and they're arguing what to do next. And and in because the vote is up whether to give this guy an a an actual role because he's ranting and raving and like convincing them about the evils of fury. And and in the end, it plays out a bit like a dictatorship because it's like. Anyone who disagrees with them, which somebody does and they get killed. There is one who does and she just leaves the meeting. But, so I guess she had enough clout and they must have just trusted she, and she wouldn't say anything. But it is one of those where it comes off as like... 
it's going to be this way and, and there's not going to be much democracy over it. So she walks out and, and she then rings the the Geller character because she has ties with him and starts warning him, oh yeah, this shit is going to go down. And we get a little bit more with the Amelia Clark character and it's not too much because she's obviously still begrudgingly like in in this group and we see a little bit more with her and like the new arrival the new refugee from who we saw in the first episode and like because she's saying to the main guy he's trustworthy so they start bringing him along on on like their missions but he doesn't really see anything like he's in the car with like amelia clark's character and the idea is that she's protecting him, so she 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 tells him to stay behind in one scene and she goes around and is like sort of spying on, on what's going on. And that's the other thing is I, I think certain things that they're dipping into in the show just aren't for me, or at least this is like bad versions of them and we get more of the Olivia Olivia Coleman character and her stuff so far although Coleman's like a good actor and she's doing a fine job it's just like it's typical gangster stuff almost like gangster stuff 101 because like she she goes to this meat place and it turns out they've got one of the scrolls hostage and they're questioning him and and it's all about the invasion and things like that and and also who he works for they're trying to get that out of him and there's actually quite an effective scene where she just like chops off his finger but the whole thing is it reveals and he's a scroll but it's but the way the scene plays out is it's just a cliche sort of gangster question scene in the back room of this place and Olivia Coleman being quite sort of like oh ha 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 posh evil British sounding like gangster leader and that's the whole vibe of it and not, not knocking her she's good but it's it's not the best role for her so far and the scene is a little bit on the cliche side but she she starts getting somewhere like she's torturing him she i think she does get like a name at some point but then they show up as in the refugee group and they start bombarding the place and she has a secret trap door or something like that to escape and like the end of the episode is this guy going off and being killed and it's almost like he sacrifices himself because the leader asks him if he said anything and he said no I didn't give them anything and the end was a bit confusing they just go off in the woods and kill him and he seems to go along with it so I guess the idea is that they, they, they're not taking any chances they killed him anyway just in case he said anything or yeah, in case something could come back on them. Or maybe he just, it's just this thing of he's sacrificing himself. But that's kind of the end scene. And we see that Amelia Clark's character is, like, upset about it. Because we, we see her face back in the car. And that's going to be something which they develop, probably. Then she's caught between these two sides. And that she's starting to have doubts about this this fringe group whether it's really the way to go so that's the episode it's it's pretty boring (laughs) it it didn't do much for me i've got to be honest so that's episode two of secret invasion it is called promises if you've seen the episode let me know your thoughts in the comments below like and subscribe as always share me out on social media you can also support the channel at patreon.com slash board now for some extra perks just a dollar a month for that but look out for more tv and more film reviews coming up soon thanks for listening goodbye <coughs>